it does indicate that we have a we have a long journey. There's work to be done. That uh, good governance is to be encouraged, and we have problems on the continent. I mean, for each Zimbabwe, for each Botswana, you can think of other difficult locations like Zimbabwe, Darfur, and others. So to set an example, to encourage people to follow the right example and to offer incentives for it to continue, I think is, is, is a worthwhile exercise. I think basically the, the agreement stands, but they have not been able to agree on the distribution of the cabinet post. And I think the protagonists have to put their nation first. They have a grave responsibility to turn the country around. And I think it's also wrong sometimes uh, we don't push them to face their responsibility. We sometimes talk as if, if only President Mbeki could swing it around. They have at least 50%, if not more, the responsibility to strike a deal. That, that's, that's, a, that's a fact, but he knows the party so well and he understands the issue so well that hopefully he may be able to cajole them into it with the support of the regional leaders. That's why they brought the leaders together today at the SADC meeting. You know, it's, it's very difficult when you've had power for a long time uh, to let go. Uh, I think what is important that even if you have an agreement, do you think it will work? With investors have confidence that they have, and this really will depend on the two leaders. And President Mugabe uh, has more to give and has to show magnanimity and put his country uh, first. I think if the two men really work together, they should be able to help turn the situation around. If one is hesitant, or unwilling to cooperate and share power fully, then you're going to have a problem. And as of today, the signs don't seem good. But who knows, people change. No, I haven't heard that they, they want to uh, pull out. Uh, what I think is likely to happen is the pace of investment will not be maintained as it was last year or this year because generally credit is tight. But I think uh, there are people who are looking at Africa specifically as a, a new frontier. Let's not forget that it wasn't that long ago that we talked about the poor Indians and the poor Chinese. In a relatively short period, look at what, have, what has happened. And this is why I'm, I'm, I belong to the school of uh, Robert Zellick, the head of the World Bank, when he talks of future African cheaters who will be running along the Asian tigers. I think the next administration should engage Africa actively. Uh, President Bush, I know, is criticized a lot for lots of things, but on Africa, he was, he was really upfront. He was more helpful to Africa than most US presidents on the AIDS issue and other, other uh, economic policies. And I hope whoever comes in will maintain that policy and build on it. Yes, there'll be pressure on the president to focus on domestic issues, to, to create jobs, uh, to get the economy going. But I think it will be short-sighted to drop Africa or drop the fight, uh, uh, our fight uh, with climate change, waiting for a better day. They are all urgent. And in life, we have to manage to tackle several urgent things at the same time. And I hope poverty, climate uh, change will be they're right along with the, uh, the fight for economic stability and prosperity.
No, in fact, I spoke in Dublin uh, two, three days ago and made the point that uh, the $700 billion that the U.S. Uh, Congress came up with in a, in a short time represents all the money, all the assistance given to Africa from all sources for one decade. And poverty and bi a billion people starving, I think, is equally urgent. And I think um, I would want to see a day when we treat poverty and starvation and hunger with the same urgency, with the same focus as we've dealt with the financial crisis.